Tonight, athletes and activism in nowhere has that played out more recently than the sidelines of the NFL when Colin Kaepernick kneeled during the national anthem, a protest over the treatment of minorities. And it reminds us all of another athlete, perhaps among the first to use his position to influence change and bring real attention to causes. We're talking about Louisville's native son, Muhammad Ali. And tonight, the former NBA player Etan Thomas is in town to talk about this topic, and he's got a new book out called We Matter athletes and activism and we want to talk about the origin of uh, activism with athletes and that famous picture we're going to show mm -hmm. that takes us back to the olympics with with the fists in the air that we vividly remember right that's with john carlos and tommy smith and i had the, the pleasure of being able to interview john carlos in my book and you know he you know I, I told him you know i had that picture on my wall since i was like in high school you know, those are the athletes who I grew up admiring, Muhammad Ali and John Carlos and Tommy Smith and, you know, Jim Brown and Bill Russell, athletes that use their position and their platform to speak out on different social, social issues that were going on in society. And those are the type of athletes that I wanted to aspire to become. How do you tell them to handle the blowback they get on social media, mm -hmm. which can be strong, and maybe pressure from owners of some of these professional teams? Well, I also interviewed um, a lot of the people in the NBA. I interviewed Mark Cuban. Uh, from the Dallas Mavericks, and I interviewed um, Adam Silver, who's commissioner of the NBA. And I wanted to get their take on everything, and Ted Leonsis from the Wizards, to see how they feel about activism, because I, I wanted to really use this book to encourage younger athletes to continue using their positions and their platforms. So I wanted to get them on record as to, you know, that they wouldn't punish athletes for using their, their position to speak out on a topic, even if it's something that they disagree with. Right. And they were all very complimentary. You know, Adam Silver, you know, he's a commissioner of the NBA, and he said, no, he values the the history of, of activism in the NBA from Bill Russell to Kareem in the past. So there's, you, a, there's a history. Well, you got that, but then let's go to Colin Kaepernick. Well, the NFL's I'm, a little different. I mean, but let's talk about that <laughs> right. because nowhere has there been more blowback than right. over something like this. Yeah, definitely. And it's, and it's unfortunate. You know, I interviewed some of his teammates. I interviewed Eric Reed, who was uh, kneeling with him the entire time, and Torrey Smith, who was there as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's, he felt so passionately about trying to do something to create awareness or to draw attention to what was going on. And that's what I wanted to do in this book is to show, you know, sometimes you get the stories that this person took a knee or this person wore a T-shirt, but you don't get the, the reasons why. So I want to interview like Dwayne Wade and Carmelo Anthony and all these different athletes who are currently using their platforms and, and get the deeper reason why. What happened to them in, the, in their past? Like, right. why does it affect them so much and things of that nature? So. You know, that's the part that is really becoming, um, you know, the, the, the biggest, you know, eye opener for a lot of mainstream America because they didn't know that athletes had to deal with these type of issues that are going on in society. Well, right. as you know, the thoughts of activism could really get going in the college years. And in this area, of course, where U of L, IU, mm -hmm. and UK, a lot of the colleges, though, tamp this down. How, what would you say to college players who? have these thoughts mm -hmm. and maybe think that's a venue where they want to show their activism. Well, we, I was just speaking at Bellarmine the, uh, today at a, at a, um, at a, a, in, in the classroom and we had a great discussion and college, you know, college years, that's when you have all of your, you know, juices flowing and you, you, you have all your opinions forming and things like that and you're learning and that's why I love speaking at colleges and universities. Um, but a lot of times they have to do things together. They have to do things as, yeah, as in the Missouri football team or the Oklahoma football team when they all band together and made a statement because there's so much power in that when they do it together. It's just a little bit different in college. You're supposed to be an activist when you're in college, right? Right, 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 <laughs> That's right. What right, I right. Thought anyway. <laughs> well, let's talk about the message that, that you want. Are we mm -hmm. getting better, though, at society? Because I look at Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. and look at the persecution, mm -hmm. you know, that he's. So, what does that say about us as a society with athletes and activism? Well, a lot of times, you know, when, when people don't agree with you, that's when they want to tell you to shut up and dribble. You know what I mean? Or shut up and play or stay in your lane. And I think we as a society, we have to get better at disagreeing. And, that, and it's okay to disagree, but we have to disagree without being disagreeable. And that's something that this takes a lot of work. I mean, we talked about that. You know, I talk about it on college campus all the time. Like, we have people, you know, on both sides of it. Some people agree with Colin Kaepernick, some people didn't. And we were able to have a civil conversation about it and learn from other people's perspectives. It's that's possible. what it's all about. It is possible. <laughs> it's possible on college campuses. So, you know. That. Well, maybe we should look that's there, right, definitely. for some we answers. We want to let folks know that they're going to get to meet you tonight. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll be speaking tonight at 7 o'clock, and um, I'll be having a book signing right afterwards. I'm really looking forward to it. Wonderful. And I'll let you know that is 
is again at Fraser Hall at Bellarmine. Athletes and activism, and you're not going to miss Eton. He is six foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to tell here on our set. Well, when he stands as tall as Dan Issel yeah. was when he stood here. Well, we were talking about that. I think you were neck and neck with Dan Issel. Right, Thank you so right, much. Right. Delight to meet you. Oh, thanks nice for having to meet me. You. Appreciate Thank it. You.